Hey everybody, Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And in this short video, I want to take you on a walkthrough of one of our maturity model products. In this case, I'm going to use the ISO 27031 maturity model for IT disaster recovery. Our maturity models, they're strategic tools that are designed to guide your team in developing and improving various functions within your business. They give you a structured approach to evaluate the effectiveness of your current processes and programs. They help you identify strengths and gaps or opportunities and then plan improvements based upon these predefined maturity levels. There's a tool that helps give you a clear roadmap to take you from a reactive ad hoc state towards an optimized, proactive, and continuous improvement environment for one of your resilience programs. Our maturity models are based on the ISO and the ASIS standards around topics like business continuity, disaster recovery, crisis management, travel safety and security, and others. In this case, I'm going to be taking you through the ISO 27031 maturity model for IT disaster recovery, but this is structured the same way as any of our other maturity models that we're going to talk through. When you go into the maturity model package after you've purchased it, you're going to essentially have two documents. One document is a how-to guide. Uh, I won't show you that here, but basically it explains how to use the guide, how to use the maturity model, uh, and put it into place in your organization. The second document is an Excel spreadsheet that looks similar to the one that I'm showing you here. Um, you will find a handful of tabs on the spreadsheet itself. I'm looking here at the overview tab. In this case, uh, again, we're looking at the, the ISO maturity model for 27031. Um, the way that we have structured these is we're using a zero through five maturity scoring approach that's taken from the COBIT-5 standard. COBIT is the Control Objectives for Information and Related Technologies, version five. It's a framework that's commonly used um, in information technology. Um, COBIT itself is a framework for managing and governing enterprise technology capabilities. But in this case, we're using their defined maturity model, a capability maturity model that goes from zero, which you see as red here, all the way through five, which is optimized. The lowest level of maturity is non-existent. It means there's a complete lack of recognizable process and that the enterprise has not even recognized there's an issue to be addressed. In the middle here is three, a defined process. That means procedures have been standardized and documented and they've been communicated through training. It's mandated that the process be followed. However, it is still left up to the individual or individual team to comply. Five is fully optimized, a, a state that you rarely get to. Um, five would mean processes have been refined to a level of best practice based on the result of continuous improvement and maturity modeling with other enterprises. IT is used as an integrated manner to automate the workflow, providing tools to improve the quality and effectiveness, making the enterprise quick to adapt. So zero is non-existent, three in the middle is defined process, five is optimized. We use this scoring mechanism uh, this scoring maturity model from COBIT because it's so broadly accepted as kind of the base of our maturity model. I'm going to now move into the maturity model itself, the second tab. And again, we're looking at ISO 27031, which is the uh, essentially their IT disaster recovery maturity model. The way the model is structured is we will see here um, the chapter in major clauses. So we start with uh, section five of the standard overview, management responsibility and policy. We reference the individual minor clauses. And then we reference the standard elements, which are requirements or controls that are within the maturity framework, uh, within the standard. So the first one here, uh, 5.1, a disaster recovery program is established within the organization. This is a pretty broad question. But where does that stand? Does the program exist? Is it, it if it just doesn't exist, then you're at zero. Um, is it initial or ad hoc? Is it repeatable but intuitive? Is it a defined process? Is it managed and measurable? Is it optimized? That's the question you're going to ask on any of these. And we think of this uh, and we instruct you in the how-to guide to use quarter point increments. So let's say we're looking at a DR program. The DR program is defined. It's not well followed. 
doesn't have good metrics attached. There's not follow up when there's nonconformity. They're a solid three. And you can now see we start to populate the maturity model. The colors will auto fill, and the score summaries on the right will auto populate in color code. Let's look at the next clause. The DR program is a process fully integrated in the organization's management activities. It's driven from the top of the organization. It's endorsed and promoted by top management. All right, that doesn't really happen in our model organization, but they've done some of this. There's been some briefings to the executive team, but there's not good modeling from the top down. Let's say they're at 1.5. And you, again, you'll see the colors fill in. Uh, the next clause, 572, a DR policy is documented within the organization. It's consistent with wider organizational BC management objectives. This may be part of an overall business continuity resilience policy as long as the DR program is documented within policy. All right, let's say the policy is in place. The policy is reviewed annually. Um, it's relatively clear from a DR standpoint. It's tied to the BC program. There's a lot of opportunity for improvement. We're at 2.5. The DR program scope is documented within policy. Well, not really. So let's say it's one. Relevant authorities and resources necessary to perform activities in line with the DR program are documented within policy. Again, let's say not really, but the sum of that is there. So we're at one. The DR policy is reviewed at planned intervals and when significant changes such as environmental changes or changes in business or structure occur. Okay, so let's say this company has a pretty defined policy process that requires the policy be approved every year. It has to be reviewed and approved in that process. And that there's provision in policy that when there are major changes, structural, organizational, that the policy be re-reviewed even if it's outside of that cycle. That's a pretty defined, measurable process. Maybe we even have notes that show this has happened. So we're at four. Okay. So our overall score for Chapter 5, Overview, Management, Responsibility, and Policy, is 2.17. And you can see that all of this auto-calculated and fills in. So that's how our maturity model works. Down at the bottom, as we go through all the different clauses and controls, uh, for this one, there are about, uh, I think there's 78 or 77 controls in total uh, in place in, the, in our 27031 maturity model. Then we'll see an overall maturity here of 0.22. And then over in the third tab, we have a roll-up. And this would show you all of the category roll-ups and then what the overall maturity is. And again, all of this auto-populates as you go through. So this is a quick walkthrough using just one of our maturity models. And again, this was the ISO 27031 standard for IT disaster recovery. And again, we see these as tools. They're instruments for self-evaluation. They help you develop some metrics that are not just operational in nature. They help you gauge the maturity of your program. And if you use these on an annual basis, uh, you know, looking, them, looking at them about the same time each year, then you can show and report on that progress of your program over time that hopefully you're continuing to mature until you reach a certain maturity scoring that you may have set as a goal within your organization. But we find these valuable to get beyond just basic operational metrics and give you a chance to show program maturity and compliance over time. These models were designed by our team based on the standard, um, and they're used as a part of our proprietary, proprietary resiliency diagnosis uh, process, our process of conducting a program level evaluation on the various resilience domains. So that's it for this brief walkthrough. Hopefully this gave you some good perspective on what this product looks like and how you can put it to use within your organization. If you have any questions about the product, you can contact us at any time prior to purchasing at contact at brightpath.com or set up time with us through the links available on our maturity model pages. We'd be happy to talk with you and answer any questions that you have prior to a purchase. Thanks again.